Fellow Power Warriors, what's going on? How are you all doing? It is Mr. Bud, and I've got a really important topic to speak with you all about today. You know, guys, honestly, from my seat, there is just no avoiding this conversation. And it's time for us to just have a straightforward, factual, adult conversation about what's going on in November. So buckle up, because we're about to talk some politics. And yes, I fully understand and I'm aware of the vast political divide that is happening in this country right now. And it pains my heart so much because, oh, it just feels like, you know, so many people are so disenfranchised and emotional and struggling. Um, and they don't know where to put all that emotion and they're mad at each other and they're, there's so much fighting going on. And it's like, it, it, to me, it's all just nonsense um, because it's unproductive, right? It's not producing anything. And as a society, we really have to learn how to have conversations that lead to results. Conversations that produce results. And, you know, we can't even get off on too many tangents here because there's a lot of directions this could go. But one of the results that we need to produce right now is just making good decisions. And look, at the end of the day, I'm not here to tell anybody who to vote for. You know, honest to God, like you vote for whoever you want to vote for. Like, I get it. Whoever you want to vote for, you have a good reason for voting for them. Whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, there's something that they mean to you. Uh, there's something that they represent to you. There's values that are more aligned or whatever it is. So, you know, I support every single person's decision, whatever that decision is. And at the same time, I'm the CEO of one of the fastest growing solar companies in the world. I'm not unbiased here, ladies and gentlemen. Like, you need to understand, and neither are you. And I don't think a lot of the industry of solar gets that. Um, and we've got to talk about it because there's major implications here, major freaking implications. And we need to talk about it. It's got to be an adult conversation. And we just have to have the ability to talk about it. And whatever decisions people make after this, that's your decision. And you're going to value certain things more than other things. And that's all good. But we need to have this conversation. Um, and I'm going to start just by saying this, okay? I don't trust politicians. Um, who, who does, right? I mean, it's like, you know, even if they're good-hearted, even if they mean what they say, the political climate that they're in is, is so challenging to work with. And I really have a huge distaste um, for kind of like emotional arguments that aren't backed in some kind of policy. Like, you know, what are the actual policies that are going to create the results that we all want? Let me ask you a question. What do you really want? Be freaking honest with yourself. What do you really want? At the end of the day, I'm pretty certain that all of us humans want the same damn things. We want love. We want connection with each other and, our, and, and healthy friends and family and positive social environments. That's core to our biological needs. We want prosperity. We want a healthy economy. We want to be able to provide for ourselves and our families and know that we are prosperous and taken care of and our needs are being met. And even we have abundance and access to abundance. We want safety. We want our society to be safe in a, good, in a good place to grow up in and live in. And, you know, if all those needs are met, then we start caring about future things, right? And we want to make sure that the future is actually going to be better for the next generations than it was for us. We don't want to leave them a worst world. Nobody wants that. Uh, but nobody's thinking about that unless all their needs are met. And if all our needs are met, then we think about the future. Is it really that much more complicated than that, ladies and gentlemen? I don't think it's that much more complicated than that. At the end of the day, we're all humans and we all pretty much want the same freaking thing. So I only have one way that I understand uh, how to make a decision right now. Um, 
about who to vote for in November. And, you know, that way is what do I have experience with? Um, I, don't have a, I don't have a ton of experience with any policy that the current administration has created that has benefited me at all. Do you? Um, you know, corporate America got a pretty big tax break. That's awesome um, for corporate America. I didn't notice much of a big difference as an individual. And I look at a lot of other things and you know, life pretty much is almost identical for me. And that's not saying anything about our, our former president before, right? I noticed no freaking difference. And I think most people would probably be honest and say that, yeah, I don't really notice much of a difference either. So at the end of the day, what are we voting for? Well, that's why I need to talk to you about solar policies, because here's where I notice a massive freaking difference. I run a solar company. You benefit from solar. Many of you, this is your full time job. This is your career. This is your livelihood. This is your future foundation for your families. You know, this is food on the table for thousands of people just in power alone. This isn't conceptual. I don't have to think whether or not this exists. I don't have to believe that it exists. This is reality. I know today we have hundreds of families that our corporate entity puts food on the table for every month. I know there's thousands of consultants that we put food on the table for every month. I know that the solar industry is putting food on the table for people every freaking month. I know this. I experience it. I don't need to make up a story about it. I don't need to believe it. I don't need a politician to sell me on it. I don't need them to get me excited about something. It is an objective fact. It is proof. Our industry is feeding families. It's creating jobs. It's putting a lot of money in people's pockets. Bottom line, that's my angle on this one. And you guys need to understand that whether or not Trump gets elected or Biden gets elected could make a difference. Um, I'm not going to say for certain because nobody knows for certain. Who knows? Maybe Trump decides to totally reverse his stance on solar energy. But you've got to understand, this is the worst president for solar energy that maybe we've ever had. He has single-handedly blocked the tax credit from getting extended every single time. The White House was, the, was who kicked it off the last stimulus package. And he has essentially vowed that all of this Green New Deal, you know, solar subsidies and all this stuff would never happen on his watch. You need to understand that if Trump gets reelected, the likelihood that the solar tax credit will go to zero is extremely high. Some of you guys might and gals might not be thinking about this. Do you know the impact that that's going to have on our industry if the tax credit goes to zero? Do you really freaking know? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I don't think many people honestly get it. It's 26% of the value of the entire solar system. Where do you think 26% of the solar system is going to come from to keep selling these solar systems at the cost competitive level to consumers that we are today? Do you think the inverter manufacturers have an extra $6,000 to throw in? Do you think the, the module suppliers that are at 35 cents a watt are coming up with that money? Do you think the, the labor construction companies are coming up with that money? It's you, ladies and gentlemen. The money is coming out of sales and marketing. You got to understand this, okay? If that tax credit goes to zero, the money's coming out of sales and marketing. And it's going to come out of everywhere. Don't get me wrong. Everyone's going to have to throw in installers, uh, equipment suppliers, project management, administration. Everyone's going to have to figure out how the hell do we make up for the loss of six to $7,000 per system? But I'm telling you right now, the biggest chunk is going to come out of sales and marketing. Um, this is going to have a real material impact on people's lives. This is going to have a real material impact on people's checks. When you go to vote in November, you have to ask yourself, are you voting for some 
opinion, some nefarious ideal that you don't even know is freaking real or not, if you're really honest with yourself, or are you voting for something that is tangible and objective and you know is going to make a difference in people's lives? Which I know for a fact solar energy and the investment tax credit does. Hold on a second. We've got the, the Cardiff pause happening right outside here. The train's just passing by. It'll be gone in a second. Now, look, I could give two shits. I'm going to just be directly honest with all of you. Two shits about either of these candidates. Either of them. I only care about the policies that I know are going to impact people's lives. Unfortunately, for everybody who hates Biden, unfortunately, he has the most aggressive solar policy that any presidential candidate has ever proposed. He is proposing 500 million solar panels installed in the first four years of his presidency. How is he saying he's going to accomplish that? By one, this is mind-blowing. Finally, somebody's listening. And again, I'm not a Biden fan, okay? I could care two shits about Biden. I'm just talking about the policies. Number one, someone is listening to the solar industry because they're proposing a complete elimination of the permitting process. They're proposing a national standard for solar permitting just like Australia. So instead of needing to go through this horrendous bureaucratic nightmare to get a solar permit, uh, approved installers would submit a permit to the federal database. And as long as you're approved, that's it. There's nothing else you need to do. You know, every once in a while, uh, audits are gonna happen on the work to make sure that, you know, the work is good. And basically, you know, pr solar providers would get added or removed from this a database of, of approved providers. But ladies and gentlemen, we are this close to actually seeing the legislation we freaking need as an industry to eliminate the biggest bureaucratic headache of our lives. Can you all imagine what would happen if permitting went away? Just imagine it. You sign a deal today. Site survey happens uh, in three days. A permit is submitted three days after that, and we're calling the customer to schedule the install. You're getting installs in two weeks. By the way, with a 30% federal tax credit extension, because the, uh, his plan is also calling for extending all the tax credits for another five years. Could you imagine if you're getting bigger checks than you are today, and in two weeks, from when you sold the deal. Installs were happening in two weeks. That is the literal difference between the policies that these candidates are proposing. One of them is proposing extending the tax credits, eliminating all the bureaucratic permitting, which would light the solar industry on fire. Like I can't even imagine, none of us could imagine the impact this would have. And the other one is proposing eliminating every single credit, taking it to zero, and maintaining all the tariffs, which are adding additional cost and keeping all the bureaucracy. Guys, this just isn't even a conversation, okay? One of these candidates is the wrong candidate for solar, and one of these candidates is the right candidate for solar, and it's that simple. So when you go to vote in November, you just gotta decide where does solar fit on your values list? And you've got full permission to make it not number one. If there's other things that Trump represents for you that are more important than solar, I get it, man or woman. Trust me, I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to believe and what your value should be. Hell no. Hell no. That's your choice, and you are free to make that choice. So make whatever choice you want. But... Again, you know, I can only look at objective proof that I have. I don't know if anything these candidates are saying is going to make any difference. What I do know is that solar makes a difference. And because I have objective proof of that, I put it as my number one value. I literally don't give a shit what else they're talking about. Because to me, it's just noise that I have no proof for. But this, I have proof for. I know it makes a difference, so it becomes my number one value because it's objective. 
That's my logic. That's my reasoning. I'm sharing it with you. That's obviously why I'm voting for the pro-solar candidate. And it's nothing uh, more complex than that. It is literally just, I know solar policies are going to make a huge difference in creating jobs, putting food on the table, and accelerating clean energy. And it's as simple as that. I can, I can rest easy knowing that that's a fact. And I'm not buying into some pipe dream or illusion or some emotionally spun story to try to get me to feel something and believe something so that somebody can, you know, uh, rise to power or whatever the hell other reason these presidents want to be presidents. I don't know. So again, you know, the purpose of this video, guys and gals, is just to have an adult conversation. Okay, we got to talk about this stuff. And you need the facts. I don't expect all of you guys and gals to be, you know, putting too much time into this, although you probably should, you know, given the impact that policy has on our industry, you should know about policy. You should invest some time and money and research into it. It's a good idea. It's your freaking livelihood if you don't. So, you know, take that for what it is. But I need to make sure, absolutely certain, as the CEO of a solar company, one of the biggest in the nation, that I'm doing what's right for my people and advocating for the policies that are going to continue to put food on their table and enable them to prosper and succeed. That's what I'm about. That's what my intention is about. And that's why I needed to make this video so that you guys get the education. And honestly, from here on out, whatever you choose to do in November is your choice. But look, uh, Texas, Florida, you guys are big states. You're influential states. Leaders in a lot of these influential states you need to be having this conversation and you need to literally think about what does your life look like if you have no tax credit or you have tax credit for another five years and back to the 30 percent because it's a difference of millions of dollars likely over your earnings over that time period um it's a big difference guys it's a big difference so you, you gotta you gotta have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation and uh you know the ball's in your court, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the ball's in your court. I've said my piece. I've done my job as a CEO of a solar company. Whatever you choose, I love you no matter what. Whatever happens, power's here to stay. We're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. We're going to crush it. We're going to stay disrupting the industry. We're going to stay leading. We're going to stay innovating. We're going to stay doing all the things that we do to be top of the game, and we're going to do it together because I got your back no matter what. I hope you can feel that. I hope you can sense that, that the reason why I'm doing this is because I got your freaking back and I want you to make lots of money and I want you to succeed and I want you to win. So with that, we'll talk to you guys later.